Can scoliosis decrease your height? We know the spine is made of many different things. And the first thing we want to talk about are the bones of the spine and they're called vertebra. And vertebra are stacked or bones that are stacked upon another from your lumbar spine to your thoracic spine to your cervical spine. And in between the vertebra are also something called intervertebral discs. And these discs are like spacers in between, um, in between the, the bones of the spine. And this, this things together, these two things together in culmination make up the height of your spine. Now, scoliosis does range in severity in the size of curvature that's actually diagnosed. And it can measure anywhere from a mild scoliosis to severe scoliosis. And the measurement is known as something called a Cobb angle. And a Cobb angle is the gold standard in measuring the severity of the scoliosis. The bigger the Cobb angle or the greater the angle becomes, the more severe the scoliosis is. And curves that are mild scoliosis cases are typically diagnosed between 25 or 10 and 25 degrees, where moderate cases between 25 and 40, severe cases are 40 degrees or greater, and then very severe for me is something we call 80 degrees plus. And this is where we di di diagnose would be called a very severe scoliosis. Now, scoliosis unfortunately is progressive over time, meaning left untreated or not treated proactively, it will worsen. It's either gonna worsen quickly during adolescence, during growth, or slowly during the adult stage, but most of the time we're gonna see this progressive nature. So where a scoliosis is initially diagnosed is nowhere near indicative of where it's gonna stay or where it's gonna end, meaning we're normally gonna see this curve progressing. So what I'm trying to say is every severe case was once moderate and every moderate case was once mild, and therefore, so therefore taking care of scoliosis in a smaller state normally need, means better results over time. But we also know as curves progress, they're also more likely to affect height because as spines start to turn and twist, they, the torso starts to compress in its length and this becomes a very noticeable thing as curves get larger, people, people tend to notice they're losing the height or length of their torso. Now, scoliosis can decrease height in several different ways, but the first thing is gonna be is when this curve actually starts to develop. Now, the loss of height sometimes, especially in adolescent cases, could be hard to really measure because when, some, when a patient is growing, they're not only growing in, in their spine height, but they're also growing, growing in their legs. So somebody could still grow in height, but their curve is actually getting bigger because their legs are compensating. You're still measuring the height or the length of them growing in their legs. So a lot of times in adolescence, we'll take two types of measurements. We'll take standing height, and then we'll take a seated height from skull to their tailbone. And a lot of times you may see their leg, their, their standing height change, but their torso height may actually become smaller. If that actually happens, there's only one reason, and that's because the curve is actually getting bigger. If they're getting taller and their seated height is staying the same, it's possible their legs are going through growth and their spine isn't. But I would always be concerned that if we're not seeing symmetrical development, that there could be some progressive nature going on in the scoliosis. And in any time you see an adolescent case actually shorten, there's only one reason, and that is normally because their curve is worsening. So short shortening standing height, I mean. So therefore measuring both things can help an adolescent case or help you understand like what's happening to that person, meaning are they worsening, is the spine worsening or are they growing and they're not really growing where there should be or where necessarily where, where it needs to be. So therefore in adolescent cases, we may not see them get smaller. We may see them not gain the height they're supposed to gain. And that can be one of the problems. In neuromuscular cases, they can have very aggressive progression. And neuromuscular cases, since they can aggress so progressively, these and it can lead to sometimes non-ambulatory patients that, of course, seated, they're going to lose a lot of their person's affected height because they're not going to be able to stand. But they also can probably progress so quickly that an, in an adolescent neuromuscular case, they can actually decrease height not so often in an idiopathic adolescent case. Now, degenerative scoliosis is the classic thing that we see height loss because degenerative scoliosis is normally scoliosis that occurs in the adult stage, and it's normally related to degenerative, degenerative changes in the spine over time. And normally something happens in the spine and it progresses in that, in that area, causes the spine to deteriorate. The bones start to deteriorate, start to lose their height and shape. The discs start to lose their height and shape. And when you start affecting the height and shape of the discs and the bone, 
bone, you're actually affecting what composes the height of the spine. So therefore we can see adult patients start to lose height. And we can also see as these curves get bigger, they start to decrease in height. And in fact, it can be so so significant that patients' ribs can start to like get land and hit patients' hips. Patients, as they lose height, become to much more, uh, more, more kinds of organ prolapsing in the lower half of their body. Since everything's been suspended to the spine, they can have other kinds of digestive problems, and other things happening in the mobility of, the, of all the organs down here because everything is being compressed in this torso. But really, the regardless of type of scoliosis, we know when these curves progress, it can make it difficult for patients to get their full height out of what they are supposed to have. And in degenerative scoliosis, as they start to lose vertical height, they're more likely to develop pain. And when they develop pain, they have a harder time of standing up straight and practice good posture. This can lead to another diagnosis, meaning the person's now developing an adult spinal deformity. So they have scoliotic deformity, and they start developing this adult spinal deformity, which these two things compound the problem. So therefore, this condition can disrupt really disrupt overall body symmetry, can affect height, can affect function, can cause pain, can, ca can cause lots of things. So therefore, how do we reverse this? Like if we start to lose height, can we start lengthening? Well, unfortunately, there's no guaranteed way to completely reverse all the loss of height that occurs or in an adolescent case or an adult case. But there's one thing we do know, is that proactive treatment on work on, on preventing a curve from worsening will prevent you from losing the height over time. So what I'm trying to say is, I would much rather deal with a 20 degree curve than a 40 degree curve that's already lost two inches because if I know if I can hold you from at 20 degrees, I can prevent those two inches from being lost. So definitely working on a proactive level is the best way. But the second best way, if we can't, if, if you're already there and you've already, your curve's already progressed and you know there's been loss of height either affected during adolescence but you haven't gained the full height you're supposed to get, or if you're in the adult case and you're already compressed and you're already losing height, which is a very, uh, very common sign of progression, how do we get some back? Well, you have to deal with the curve on a structural level, meaning if you're experiencing pain and you're experiencing you know, um, symptoms as a result of scoliosis and you're losing height and you're only dealing with your pain, like taking pills or medications or injections to try to deal with what you're feeling as a result of scoliosis, but not reducing the curve size itself, you're never gonna gain back the length. The only way to gain back the length is to deal with the curve on a structural level. A lot of patients, uh, or a lot of uh, some literature out there are saying, well, increasing core strength can maybe help support the spine and stop it from progressing. But unfortunately, this is not consistent, meaning just being strong doesn't necessarily mean that your curve won't progress, and it doesn't necessarily mean that your curve won't continue to lose height. I see lots of adult patients that come to my office, and they're very, very fit, and we have clear record of their curve progressing. And I can actually argue that if you have a scoliosis and you're strengthening the scoliosis in that position, you're just you're strengthening the deformity, right? You're not actually strengthening a reduced version of it. So in most cases, when we want to increase strength, we want to do it in a corrected position. So normally, once we reduce the curve and make the curve straighter, then using core strength and home therapy and exercise therapy can be much more effective because now you're strengthening it in, in a better position, not strengthening it in the bad position that it's already in. So here at Scoliosis Reduction Center, we offer proactive treatments that first and foremost address the scoliosis structurally through very specific chiropractic care, through home therapy, home rehab, through corrective bracing, through office therapy, scoliosis rehabilitation, that's specifically designed to reduce the curve and try to restore some of this compressive nature of scoliosis to bring back some of the height that you either lost in your adult life or never really gained during your adolescent life because you actually grew and developed with the scoliosis actually progressing. Thanks for watching. I hope you found this information helpful. If you'd like to hear about other topics and information on scoliosis, type in the comments below and let us know. And finally, subscribe and hit the bell icon to be notified of when we publish content. Thanks.